Welcome to HB Tuner's GM Gen 5 training part 28. In this training module, we're gonna be exploring the rev limiting feature on our Gen 5 vehicles, as well as our catalyst over temp protection feature. We have a lot to talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our limiting features in our Gen 5 applications. So the limiters are gonna be our rev limiter and our speed limiter. We're also gonna take a look at our catalyst over temp protection feature. This makes sure that the OEM cats or even a high flow cat won't melt in the exhaust and brick if we have an extended high periods of high thermal loads on the exhaust system. So if we're at full throttle for 30 seconds, for a minute, it's gonna generate an incredible amount of thermal heat in the headers, in the exhaust, and if that heat is continuing to, to build up in the exhaust, the catalysts can actually be damaged. Um, they can and will brick themselves. In order to avoid that, we can inject additional fuel, which will cool them down. So we're gonna look at how we can work with the catalyst over temp protection first here, then we'll move into the limiters because um, this is something that you may or may not have to deal with on your setup. So if you've deleted the cats, well, we can turn this off. If you have stock cats or high flow cats, you wanna keep this on, you wanna make sure it works right for you so you still have this protection feature in place. Now, a lot of people turn it off even with high flow cats. I generally like to leave it on if it's not causing me any harm as I'm doing my full throttle pulls, I'm not seeing it activate and starting to skew up what my EQ ratio command is going to be in power enrichment, then I don't worry about it. I know it's there in case that it starts to calculate and, and, and theoretically uh, figure out what that catalyst temperature is going to be. Um, it'll kick in and do its job. So let's take a look at where we can find our COT protection first, and then we'll deal with the limiters and taking a look at how we can modify and work with those. So I have my 2018 Yukon Denali calibration file open here. Any Gen 5 file will work in order to follow along with what I'm showing and talking about here in this tutorial. So if we go up here into engine, and we move from general here over into our fuel section, we have this tab here called temperature control. We have four different sections under temperature control, and the only one we need to worry about is our catalyst protection. We can see the component protection. This is set at very high RPM. It's bypassed. We're never gonna go that high of RPM. There's a hot engine protection set to 493 degrees. We're never gonna get up that hot, so that's bypassed and essentially disabled. And then the turbocharger protection, this is gonna be an over temp protection that's disabled because we're not factory turbo. Now, if you're installing an aftermarket turbo setup on your Gen 5, you do not wanna turn this on because this is OEM level modeling based around the OEM exhaust manifolds and turbo, turbo setup and, and downpipes and all of that we're not gonna be able to use this. So we're gonna make sure this is always disabled, even if you are converting your car to turbo. Okay, so now that we've talked about the other miscellaneous things here in this window, we're gonna move into our catalyst protection and talk about this. Now I mentioned briefly what this is about. If you have stock cats or aftermarket cats, if we have our exhaust temperature picking up greatly, let's say we're doing extended full throttle runs, you're gonna find that that exhaust temperature is gonna drastically increase. And as part of the temperature increases, the catalyst is also gonna increase. There's a certain temperature range where the cat can actually start to melt and then it will start to solidify and brick. And at that point, we've damaged the cats and they need to be replaced. Catalytic converters are extremely expensive. We don't wanna go and have to replace our cats, um, especially the OEM cats, they're very expensive. So the catalyst protection is gonna do its job in order to cool down the cats what it's gonna do is inject more fuel and then it'll allow when everything's being combusted in the engine and we command a much richer mixture, when we're having the combustion air coming out in our exhaust stream, it's gonna run a little bit cooler. It's gonna cool down the EGTs, it'll cool down the cats because they're in line of the exhaust. So that's the idea here of how the COT works. It's gonna make sure that we don't damage the catalytic converters and brick them by running them too hot. Essentially gonna be a way we can cool them down. So, a couple things about this. First thing, we can find right here, the COT, we can see it's set to enable right now. If you have cat deletes, just set it to disable. Get rid of it, you don't need it, there's absolutely no reason to keep it in place. If you have stock cats, I highly recommend keep it in place. If you have aftermarket high flow cats, it's gonna be your choice if you wanna keep this on or not. I tr traditionally keep it on in most of the high flow cat situations I'm in because it usually doesn't rear its head as being a problem until we're doing really extended, high-spirited type of driving where you're at full throttle for extended periods of time, and that's gonna be potentially damaging that aftermarket cat. Even though it's a high-flow cat, it can still be damaged. 
So I generally like to keep it on whenever possible, but we can take a look at some data logs here and we can actually spot some trends and seeing if it's being triggered. There's a couple different things we can look at. So I'm gonna keep it on for right now for my vehicle. I do have high flow cats in my exhaust. So I have uh, cooked headers and then I have a Y pipe. We have high flow cats in the Y pipe for the stock exhaust and uh, I, I wanna keep it on. I wanna make sure they don't damage those cats. So a couple things with this. We have a minimum enrichment and a maximum enrichment. Let's take a look at this. What we're gonna find is that this is an EQ ratio commanded. Now we know what EQ ratio represents. We've talked about that in our power enrichment mode. We've also talked about the EQ ratio even in idle and part throttle. We target 1.0 in our EQ ratio and that's gonna be the equivalent of stoichiometric at idle and part throttle. At full throttle, we command whatever's coming from the power enrichment. Now the power enrichment, the EQ ratio itself is gonna be a fuel to air ratio, not an air fuel ratio. So it's kind of opposite of what we normally think. What we can find is we can use our... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.